Oh, drat, I was driving along minding my own business when that vulgar leech hit my beamer with his pickup truck. I fear I've fractured my clavicle. I say, old boy, don't simply put it in the hands of your insurance company to sort it out. Talk with the dedicated road solicitors at the Advocates Law Firm. Pipe down, you old sod. The Advocates will see your case through to the bitter end and won't sleep a fortnight until they have victory in their grasp. Jolly good, old man. Jolly good indeed. You get injured, the Advocates get results. AdvocatesLaw.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, the podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the Men's Room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and see the throw hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed. Today we toast 26-year-old Albert, I can't say his last name, of Sheffield, England. Anyway, Albert's been dating his girlfriend, Valeria, uh, for just over a year after meeting on a dating website. And the pair say they both strongly believe in destiny, and they happen to log into the app for the first time on the same day. He says she was the first match, and after meeting, they became an instant item. So much so that Albert planned to propose marriage. Now, Albert, being the romantic that he is, he wasn't going to just ask her. Oh, no, 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 no. He spent nearly two weeks meticulously planning the perfect proposal. He filled the living room with 60 balloons surrounded by 100 tea light candles. That spelled out the words, marry me, with a question mark, all right? He then went to pick up Valerie from work, and he was going to bring her back home for the big surprise. And they were both very surprised because when they returned, the 100 candles that Albert had lit burned his home to the ground. Oh, my. Absolutely. There was nothing salvageable. They come back. It was a three-alarm fire. The fire department is actively trying to put this thing out. The whole thing burned to the freaking ground. All he had was a picture that he had taken of the setup, proud of himself, obviously, before he went to pick her up. And Albert said, quote, it didn't go exactly as I thought it would. Did she say Bit yes? Bit of an understatement. The good news is she still said okay, yes. All right. She did say Jesus. yes. So through all of that. So what he did was. Moved in with her? Well, the fire, <laughs> moved in with her, but the fire departments are putting out his place. And uh, he just dropped down on one knee anyway, asked for marriage. Meanwhile, there's like the fire department behind him running mm-hmm. around. She said yes, so I guess all is good. How long was the time between he li- him lighting them and Bro, him going to get her? I do not know. But again, you know, like anything, I think once you leave your place, Balloons, just with the air circulation, probably just one balloon with the little ribbons hanging on the bottom, rolled over one of the 100 tea lights, lit on fire, and that's all she wrote. But yeah. That is unbelievable. See, uh, that's why I'm not romantic. But let's drink. We pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! yummy. So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down, down the hola, bitola! The Men's Room presents... Profile this. Ask Stephen to throw a hook at the police server one. Now profile this is play. A short can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Jordan. Welcome to the men's room. Hello. Hola. Hola, Hola bitola. All right, George, you understand how this here game is played? Yeah. Fantastic. As always, we have one of three stories for you to choose from. We have the wonderful world of drugs. We have bite me. In other words, what did someone find in their food? And finally, interior decorating, where you guess the foreign object that ended up inside of someone. Let's do the drugs. Drugs! The wonderful yes. world of drugs it is. Yes. You have any experience with drugs there? What? Do you have any experience with drugs? That's the right answer. No, just marijuana. Just marijuana. All right. Yeah, that doesn't quite count to me. (laughs) All right, let's go to San Antonio, Texas, where a 17-year-old girl 
She's behind bars on capital murder charges for an Easter Sunday shooting death in northwest Bexar County. Now, the shooting took place in the early morning hours of April 12th during a botched drug deal. The deal went wrong. Things went sideways. Deputies say the 17-year-old, she showed up there with her boyfriend and another friend with plans to rob the victims. Well, 20-year-old Christian Reese, he ended up getting killed during the shooting. Now, according to her arrest paperwork, she told investigators she didn't remember much about what happened since she'd been high on what drug for the last two weeks. Dang. Uh-huh. Like, put it this way, the police believed her. Like She was in a, a different they state of mind. Her? Yeah, because she looked like she'd been on this drug for two weeks. So I don't, I don't know anybody would say I'm high. I've been high for two weeks that hadn't been high for two weeks. Right. I mean, that's you're probably unless you've been high for three weeks and you're trying to bring things down. It's but only been two weeks. Okay. The question is: Was it meth, heroin, crack, or bath salts? I mean, I've forgotten a lot of stuff because I was high, but I can't imagine not forgetting that I murdered someone. And before anyone brings yeah, up the no, kidnapping, I was, I was drunk. Bath salt. You said bath salts? Yeah. It, that, that sounds just like, that, like bath salts, right? They're like not remembering, like, you know. Murdering where, where, where do people get bath salts? Is it something that you can just get at a store someplace and you use it some way different? Or I think is it if, something that you get from a like, drug dealer? I don't even know how people get it. It's like I know. They get it from this guy named Phil that Miles and I used to know. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I think we do this every time. It's like the fake synthetic stuff, right? Bath yeah, salts. yeah. I mean, look, I'm not 100. percent I think you can get them at like bad bodegas and head shops, kind of stuff like that. All right. That's where I remember seeing them. I, I, I mean, bath salts, yeah, but she's been high for two weeks. Two weeks. And it feels awful methy to me. Yeah. No. Let's 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 switch it to meth. Hang on, hang on, friend. <laughs> now, also. <laughs> While not, I don't know that you could be constantly high that whole time, but maybe in a daze if you're shooting heroin. But I'm trying to think of what drug would make me like go to a drug deal thinking I'm going to rob the drug deal. Right, you went there with ill intentions in the first place and just went way sideways. Mm-hmm. I think it's uh, I think it's heroin. I think it's heroin because it's Texas, and I know that uh, well Plano's got a pretty big, bad problem, but uh, I think state. based on the amount uh, they are robbing them. So right, that was the plan, you know, and it's just. Heroin's probably pretty expensive, I guess. Maybe. I'm gonna Fortunately, go. it's not. Oh, it isn't? Okay. That's I'm, why it's I'm, a bigger I'm problem. I'm just still yeah. going to stick with uh, heroin, though. I just don't think it could be crack. Because that's that's a lo- You'd have to smoke so many, so much crack to stay high for two weeks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But robbing people... Man, I'm really torn there, right? Because you're in Texas. You're close mm-hmm. to Mexico. Right. Which is both trafficked a lot of methamphetamine Meth, sure, yeah. and heroin. Man, yeah, is... no, I'll, let's, let's switch that to meth. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm going to go with her. I think, I yeah, think this, I think this, meth. yeah, she's seven, what did you say, 17, 18? 17, mm-hmm. 17. Yeah. yeah, she's been strung out on meth. Say meth? Yeah. And so, what about you there, Jordan? Are you agreeing with Ted on meth? Yes. Okay, final answer? Yes, the meth. We're going to find out if this, uh, this teen was uh, on meth, crack, heroin, or bath salts next. That was a tease. Bro, gnarly. What's up, Taylor? Dude, that nerd in his electric hybrid totally blew the light while texting his yuppie friends. That's so bogus, bro. Are you hurt? Yeah, like I can't move my hips, bro. I think I broke my pelvis, man. Dude, no way. Wait. Taylor, you need to drop a dime and talk with the lawyers at the Advocates Law Firm. No way. Can't afford that, bro. Your crotch is broken, man, and they don't earn any money unless they win your case. Dude, no way. You get injured, the advocates get results. Contact me today at advocateslaw.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember... It didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today. And our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Back to the conversation. 
This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Subject drugs today on Profilers. We're going to take this teen behind bars after a uh, shooting death during a uh, botched drug deal. Yeah. She told cops she didn't remember a thing because, uh, well, she'd been high on drugs for two weeks. So the question is, what drugs was she high on for two weeks? Was it meth? Was it crack? Heroin? Or bath salts? And that is the very question that we posed to our friend Jordan here. But uh, let's see. Miles, you said heroin. That was your guess in this case. Mm-hmm. And oh, okay. sorry. And then, Jordan, you agreed with D. Ted Smith that methamphetamine seems like the likely culprit here. Two weeks high to the point you don't remember, you know, killing someone. Okay. All right. So you learned yourself a lesson there, Jordan. If you want to murder someone or forget about it, be high on meth. You're welcome. <laughs> that is a horrible, horrible story, but I'm excited to get a win. Okay. I mean, you, you were crossing your fingers when I'm get, coming up to the answer. I'm like, man, what is wrong with this dude? I just sure <laughs> hope that 17-year-old Come on. Been a bad shot week? killed that guy. <laughs> Miles has been mouth. whooping my butt all week. <laughs> oh, I Not see, today. I see. <laughs> now for all TV news all the time, it's time for TV Time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, I'm again. the men's room presents... TV time with Ted. Ah! Didn't get to my water in time. <laughs> Your choices today will be Seth Myers. <laughs> you always usually repeat it. I have to take a sip. Seth uh, Myers. Seth. Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Oh, Thanks, fellas. Yes. <laughs> Conan O'Brien. Conan. Or Ted Smith. Is it Ted or is it late night? That's right. All these guys have teams of writers to come up with a monologue each and every night. It is up to you to determine if this is in fact a late night joke and from whom or could it be a V. Ted Smith original? Uh, Disney made a big announcement. Mulan will now be available on Disney Plus for 30 bucks. That's why when you click purchase, it says, are you sure? Then it asks you, are you really sure? Finally, it's this. Okay, Rockefeller. Seth Myers. Ted Smith. Jimmy Fallon. Disney made a big announcement. Mulan will be on Disney Plus for 30 bucks. That's why when you click purchase, it says, are you sure? Then it says, seriously, are you sure? And finally, it says, okay, Rockefeller. I got to ask. Uh, I don't know a lot of it. That's the, that's the live version of that, correct? It is the live version. So, My kids were already distressed that it was not released to theaters when it was scheduled That's what to. I was going to ask. So it was supposed to go out in theaters. Obviously, that did not happen. So the right. reason it's 30 bucks is because this is a first run, but available on Disney+. Plus. And here's the thing, man. Okay. You know, it's not going to be adults watching Mulan, by and large, not adults. 30 bucks for a movie is worth it. Because if I took my kids to see Mulan, which is what I would have had to do, I would have walked out of there $80 poor. Okay. By the time you buy yeah. the tickets, yeah, popcorn, totally. soda. I mean, oh, seriously, like 30 bucks, hell yeah. And you don't have to sneak in the beer. <laughs> I don't have to suck down the flask. <laughs> I can just openly drink in the living room. And I don't have to sit there and watch it. I mean, again, the last time I took my kids to the movie, it was only the two of us, or three of us, right? So the two kids and me. We went. We went to uh, Five Guys to grab a little lunch. Nice. Then we went to the movie theater, got the popcorn and the soda. I got home. I'm like, I spent over 120 goddamn dollars for a movie that I did not want to see. So I would have taken some five, some fries in. Some, <laughs> it's right next to it, too, man. Oh, so good. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, Jerry Fowell. Farewell? Fallwell. Jerry Fallwell. Fallwell. Yeah. Jerry Fallwell Jr. got in trouble when a picture showed up on Instagram with him on a yacht or with his arm around a uh, female and his midriff showing. Uh, he called into a radio show and said, quote, he's going to try to be a good boy from here on out. Or you could act like a man. <laughs> Need to me. Yeah. All right. But do you get what I'm referencing there? You could act like a man. No. It no. Would ha- what if I smacked Miles across the face and said, "Are you going to act like a man?" Show me. Show me. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Knock me out. Maybe. No. It'll help if it. you slap Miles in the face. Uh, uh, Scarface. Uh, You're I'm, close. Uh, God damn it. Godfather. The Godfather. Okay. Did you see the picture, by the way? Yes. Oh. Of what? Fallwell. Oh, I thought you were talking about. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I wasn't really looking at him that much. I was like, yeah, I see what he's doing. Did you see his pants? It's just they've got they've got their <laughs> pants unbuttoned and unzipped. Right. He also runs a university where you can't. The women aren't allowed to do that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, he does all kinds of fun stuff. Mm. <laughs> uh, three men were stranded on a desert island, so they drew a giant SOS on the beach, and it actually worked. Asked how they survive. Well, 
Let's just say there used to be four of us. Foul. Conan? That is foul. Three men were stranded on a deserted island in the Pacific, so they drew a giant SOS on the beach, and it actually worked. Asked how they survived, they said, well, let's just say there used to be four of us. A new study found that women who use marijuana have better sex lives, mainly because they don't remember your performance. <laughs> That's a step mine. That's right. All right, nice oh. one, nice one, nice one, yeah. yeah. That's a little dry. Mm -hmm. It's a stout. <laughs> Kraft is giving away limited edition mac and cheese breakfast boxes this week to encourage people to start their day with mac and cheese, <laughs> as opposed to what they currently starting their day with, vodka. <laughs> Seth? Seth, yeah. Seth. Finally, Kraft is giving away limited edition mac and cheese breakfast boxes this week to encourage people to start their day with mac and cheese, as opposed to what they're currently starting it with, vodka. It's kind of funny, because Fallon had a joke about sneaking, that's why I made the joke about sneaking in booze to the movie theater, Yeah. about sneaking in uh, your vodka to the movie theater with your kids. And I was like, hmm, is vodka the official drink of the NBC late night staff? Well, again, I think the vodka, and, and Fallon is a, a known drinker, but we referenced this earlier, vodka does not leave a whole lot of stink on your breath, right? So if you're chugging a little bit, that, that way, even when you talk to your kids, like, just hurry up and open the goddamn M&M's, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. There's people in the movie theater opening M&M's, because they're trying to be quiet. Like, how big is the goddamn bag just opening? And then it always rolls down the box, too. You're like, <laughs> kunk, 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 kunk. It's just why like, they put them in there. It's a stupid idea. And you want to tell other people, the soda is done. Thank God we don't have to worry about going to the movies anymore. That's over with. I still don't know why they ever started selling nachos. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think for the late night guys, too, I think uh, a lot of times people that are uh, trying to stay a certain, uh, we'll just say, weight. Yes. Enjoy, enjoy the vodka. Ah, okay. So, uh, Let's see. You guys know the uh, sound from Netflix? The sound. You know, oh, you, you mean when, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> <Ta -da. laughs> exactly like this. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a lot of sound. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Have a little John. Yeah. What? <laughs> Every time you make a selection. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> I would get any streaming service that does that. And if you make one he doesn't agree with, then yeah, exactly. Okay. No. What? 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 <laughs> My God, I gotta keep scrolling until he says okay. I want to check to see if you're still watching, right? Because you've been binging. Finally, hit you with that. Cut that bitch off. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Netflix. If you run with this idea, we want money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like also they say everyone knows the ta dum sound plays when Netflix when the Netflix end. Netflix, <laughs> boy, that's some ghetto ass. Why well, got Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> What's the selection today? Uh, the one they offer, right? <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Uh, so I guess originally they wanted to use a goat's uh, bleat belch. The, the, uh, I like oh. the sound. Uh, an exec said, quote, I like the sound of a goat. It was funny. I thought it would be quirky. Our version of uh, Leo the lion. Leo the lion, by the way, is the, the MGM, lion. Yeah. yeah. Roar! Uh, for a while, we were stuck on that goat sound. I thought it would be a good time. Which... I mean, it'd be funny for a sec. Maybe they could do it like Google does things, right? So if it's a holiday or some famous person's birthday they want to remind you of, they kind of change their icon the a little bit. The Google Doodle. Yeah, the Google Doodle. Like, maybe do that. But I feel like if every time I went to Netflix I had to listen to that, it would piss me off enough I would stop watching Netflix. Yeah, it would be weird. Like, come on, man. It's also just funny how you just, like, whatever it is, you just kind of get used to the sound. You do. So now, like... Now that's part of Netflix, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're excited, you switched over from cable, like you're gonna watch Netflix. You, you gotta hear that sound. I'm talking the, the best audio signature, I believe they're called that. So there's like uh, Intel inside, right? Bing, boom, 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 boom. I still don't know what they do, but apparently it's important that it's there. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you're watching a movie, 
Uh, but on, and before the movie starts, that big THX like sound thing, sound thing to let you know they do the sound. I'm like, I don't know what that is, but it's just cool. You feel like something awesome is going to happen. Then I remember I'm at a G-rated movie and it's going to suck. Yeah, that's my life lately. I wish you would tell me uh, out loud when it shuts down. Like you know, like like, are you still watching this? <laughs> are you sleeping? Yeah, like oh god, it gets me <laughs> off the couch. That'd be great. You know what I mean? Like I need to go to bed. Or at least say we recommend exercise. What do you think's worse? When Netflix asks you because you've watched so many episodes right. and you're you obviously are still watching, right? Or when you wake up, it's like, oh, uh, thanks Netflix. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> thanks for cutting it off. I don't even know where I am now. <laughs> How about season two? Right. Damn it. Then it's that awkward thing where you got to back up to the episode you were watching, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. you're not sure how far in you were. Was I sleeping here? And I can't. Mm-hmm. No, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't have had that last shot. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, everybody likes it. I would also. I can never talk about sounds that remind you of something without bringing up uh, the, the Fox Sports thing. Oh God! Yeah, it's one of the best. Yeah. Uh, rem, rem, rum, and <laughs> Ren and Stimpy are being revived. Uh, yesterday I sat here and I said, I don't know why they don't come up with new shows. But I'm like, oh, Ren and Stimpy? Cool, cool, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. As soon as they said they were going to do Beavis and Butthead again, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm down for that. I don't think of Ren and Stimpy. I always get worried when you say, well, it's going to be a reimagining. The thing about Ren and Stimpy, it was such a weird, quirky show. To me, that was the beauty of it. Right. But I'm like, don't read, because every time people reimagine things, it seems like the imagined part has the least emphasis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be reimagined version of the show with a new creative team. Huh, huh. I mean, it's, like, I, I don't, we don't say that about sports, right? We don't go, we re, re, reimagined our this. roster. Right. You're like, well, we got new players. So it's right. like, well, if you don't have the same people that created it, like. Is yeah. it the same show? Is Thank you. Uh, and you're right. Comedy Central announced last month that they were bringing back uh, Beavis and Butthead. Mike Hawk, how are we doing on King of the Hill, by the way? I am about three or four seasons in at this point. Love it. Love every right. minute of it. Okay, very good. You hadn't watched it before, huh? Correct. I it's it was always I was a little bit late to the King of the Hill party, you know, as I grew up. I had heard about Family Guy and it it started as I was getting to that age. I never watched The Simpsons. I was not allowed to watch The Simpsons when I was growing mm-hmm. up. And then uh so started watching Family Guy. That was my first one, then I moved over to Futurama. And then American Dad, and then just lately, it showed up on Hulu, and I've said, this is this is a classic, it's all over the place, I'm seeing memes about it everywhere, I've got to actually sit down and watch King of the Hill while I can actually do it for free on the streaming service, sure. and I've loved every second of it. You also got to check it, out when, uh, when when Hank's on uh, Beavis and Butthead, too, you know, because that, that right. started there, so like he's always going to like, you two boys were caught whacking in my shit. <laughs> That's actually where it got started, because I was watching Beavis and Butthead first, and then this character came up that sounded suspiciously like Hank Hill. And I went, okay, so this is obviously stemmed from this, so why not? i got to watch this show. Right, which is funny, too, because in Beavis and Butthead, you don't like Hank Hill. No. Right? Right. But I love King of the Hill. Oh, he's awesome. Yeah. You you King of the Hill guy? King of the Hill guy, sure. And King of the Hill is very, the audience of that show it blows my mind. Like, like, who likes it? Yeah. Who's your favorite character? For me, I can't think of the guy's name. Mike, you're current on it, maybe. You're, the neighbor with the mirrored shades, conspiracy guy. Dale. Dale. Yes. He is awesome. Dale Gribble. Mm-hmm. He yeah. is so ridiculous. I like a Boom Hours funny. They're all good. He's funny, but you never know, I mean, right, obviously, right. what the hell he's saying. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I just like Hank. You mean Rusty mm-hmm. Shackleford? <laughs> right. <laughs> he's like the guy who calls our show. I am not disguise my voice. <laughs> yeah, I think Dale Griffin would be more like Eastwood. Yeah. Well, Like working on stuff, tinkering with sure, it. Sure, like, sure. N- knows a ton. <laughs> a little crazy, no offense, Eastwood, but like knows a ton and stuff, but just like, all right. Yeah. I also just love the fact that they sit in that stupid alley behind their houses and drink yep. beer. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, you want good news or bad news for sports? Uh, give us the bad news first. All right. Let me grab that. Uh, all right, throw it away. Oh, Anyhow, okay. I was. Well. <laughs> 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 I'm like, where did I Damn. That was quick. There it is. I lost no, that thing. That's not it. Wow. Anyhow, that's a gonna, bummer. There we go. The Field of Dreams tribute. Yes. Okay. So they have the field in Iowa. It's been there for a while. I want to say, I don't know if they ever used it for like Little League or this or that. Minor League. Did they use it for Minor League? Minor League. I want to say it, it seats like 8,000. You're talking about the actual Field of Dreams where you can go and they're going to play the Major League Baseball game? No, 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 no. 
The, well, the field has been there. There hasn't right. been a team playing there. Oh, okay. okay. Because they were going to build a temporary 8,000 seat. Oh, is that what it was? I right, thought, right. Yeah, okay. So I'm saying I don't know if they've ever had actual baseball on that field. So you could always go and visit it and stuff. And then uh, this year, the Yankees and the Chicago White Sox, they're going to play a regular season game where, again, they were going to build temporary 8,000 seat park. Some people had tickets. It was going to be awesome. <laughs> you were going to go to Iowa to watch that game, huh? Damn right. That's cool. It's not happening, though, is it? No, it's not. Okay. Well, it seems like if you're on a social distance, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go to Iowa. <laughs> right. I mean, it's Anywhere. Not the, most, not the most dangerous place, probably. It is. Though. But, you know, you know, it's like everything else. You don't want to be sitting there with 8,000 people. Now to the good news. Uh, the XFL might be coming back. Woo! Mm-hmm. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he bought it. I also saw, well, his, his like, uh, investment gr- group, right. I also saw something the other day that was, like, he should get on it quick. Like, and I kind of agree with this, right? Like, is we keep seeing with baseball, right? Baseball's struggling because they're not in a bubble. Mm-hmm. The NBA, again, the NBA, and, and I'll give credit. I don't know if it was worth it, but the MLS is back tournament. Like, people are getting tested all the time. You're in a bubble. Nobody else is interacting. So the NBA is like, they, they've been great. Baseball did not do that. They keep having issues, this and that. So the NFL right now, most college football, none of them have a plan for a bubble. So I just saw something the other day that was like... Not having a plan, the American way. Right. It was like the Rocks should just grab all those XFL players right now, throw them in a bubble, you know, because what was mm-hmm. there? You know, you're right. There's a total of eight teams. Eight teams. Uh, it's not, and I think it was 50-man rostered, eight teams, so it's 400 players. Maybe I did the math wrong. I don't care. But the point is, it's a lot fewer players than the NFL, for sure. By the way, someone I texted in, the XFL is the NFL reimagined. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that, which is a good point. But yeah, you're right. With only eight teams, that's just one of those buzz terms. I know, but you can do it for sure. And if you did it now, you know, you can spark the interest back up. Because the problem is, they're saying, look, you know, COVID hit and it shut the league down. And since it's a fledgling league, like it's done, done. He buys it back. But you're right. With only eight teams, you can generate the interest again. God only knows what the NFL. Can you pick do. up the season from where it left off too? You could, but I, mean, I think the problem is, Three, but, four? but keep in mind, a lot of those players got signed to NFL, not a lot, but enough, got, the really good guys, some of them got signed to NFL teams. So okay. you come back, so the, at the quarterback for Houston, the guy was playing lights out, well, he got a gig. I think he's in Indianapolis now. And the money you get to be the low man on the totem pole versus what you get, right? you know, top right. notch yeah. XFL, he's not coming back. No. But that's the whole idea of the league anyway. Oh, sure. You know what I mean? I mean, if you, if you rise to that level, yeah, you should go to the NFL. Right, and and nothing against the XFL or whatever, but America, you know, America's sport is it's not baseball anymore. No. It's, it's football. Absolutely. So even if you put out guys that may be a little less than the quality you had, you know what I mean? Like, that's why springtime football, the XFL kind of failed before. Is like, do people really want to watch this? But now the country's so thirsty for it. You know that's what I mean? True, so, man. like, if you yeah. put it on, trust me. People will watch it. Now, if you have to compete with the NFL directly, forget it. That's going to be a little tough. <laughs> right. Exactly. exactly. So thank we'll you, Ted. We appreciate it. You are listening to The Men's Room. Hey, all of it, y'all. Thank you so much for listening to The Men's Room Podcast. And thanks to our pals at the Advocates Law Firm for being great partners. Yes, even you, creepy, creepy, creepy Kyle. Seriously, though, if you'd been injured as a result of somebody else in your car, on your bike, walking across the street, talk to our friends at the Advocates Law Firm and let them help you out. Yeah, they're the best injury lawyers around, and they want to make sure that you're not taken advantage of. Plus, your first consultation is free. It's simple. You get injured, the advocates get results. Contact them today at advocateslaw.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. It is time for your headline. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my cop. Because I screwed up earlier. Our top story, we go to the great state of Maryland where the state troopers have gotten to the bottom of something fishy in their ranks. Fellow troopers became suspicious when one of their own on an elite DUI unit had racked up more than 50 arrests. After a short investigation, it was discovered that the officer wasn't actually making those arrests. Turns out that he had made a handful of false reports using fake names to boost his numbers. How did he think that would work out? 
You, you have to have a legitimate driver's license upon, you know, pulling someone over for DUI. You have to have a name. And, right. You know what I mean? Like, Maybe that's why he got busted. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what, why you think Why you think that you could get away with that is beyond me. Trooper was sent to court and uh, in charge, and he not only he wrote up these reports with fake names, he made jury summons. Not not jury summons, but he made court summons. Good and these Lord. And these fake names, which is only like six of them, but still these fake people, of course, never showed up to their court date. And either did he. Right. He wasn't there either. So even if they were real people and really showed up, it could have been dismissed. So what is, I mean, do you get a bonus for pulling over an S-ton of drunk drivers? It says that he was on an elite squad, so I wonder if he doesn't get a pay bump for being on this upper echelon of DUI patrol, but. I mean, look, I don't know, but to me that sounds like, your motivation to do that to me, generally speaking, be monetary. Right. So maybe. Right. You know, I mean, it had to have been, but also like. No offense, but like he's a state trooper. I feel like in Maryland, isn't that kind of his job to pull over people? Mm-hmm. Do you right? Right? Yeah. There's no shortage of drunk drivers ever. As you I can mean, see, that, we you know, know nothing about yeah. being state troopers, so we have no idea why exactly he was doing what he was doing. In other news, a man in Lincoln, Nebraska, li- uh, lived everyone's nightmare while attempting to sell his motorcycle. He had listed the bike online and met up with an interested buyer at a church parking lot, and the buyer gave the motorcycle a test ride around the lot for a moment before speeding off down the road. He was met a short distance away by a car who provided him with a helmet, and he continued to flee. The thief was later tracked down by police and arrested, where it was discovered that he was already wanted on five felony warrants. Jesus. <laughs> to the five, shock of five. no one. Right. It's a lot. I don't know how anybody would sell a bike and not and, and be able to secure that. You know, I sold the car, funny enough, in a church parking lot. I don't know why that's the place to go, but it is. But at least I could sit in the passenger seat of that thing. Because, of course, they want to test drive it. They want to make sure that I'm not fleecing them as well. But how on a bike do you actually do that in a safe environment? I'm going to ride, bitch. Right. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Hang on. I got my helmet, too. Uh Well, even in a car, it's like, you know, as I'm taking for a test drive, you're in the passenger seat and be like, I have bad news for you. I'm a kidnapper. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Put your seatbelt on. Church parking lots work both ways. How's that? Well, it makes you feel comfortable because kind of a-hole would wrap somebody in a church parking lot. I know. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this guy right here. And also, it's just natural for people that go to church to be like, we'll just meet at the parking lot. Sure. Not to mention how full is that parking lot on any other day but Sunday. Yeah. Or that's... Wednesday night for some reason. Oh, yeah. You know? I feel like Wednesday's the day you have church outside of Sunday. Right. Unless that's you like go the... every morning, you're one of those people. Exactly. Exactly. A teacher in the UK was fired for having an affair. Rumors had spread amongst other teachers that the woman was having multiple relationships with students' parents over the years, but it wasn't until she finally got caught in the act of the par- in the parking lot during a parents' event that she was uh, let go from her position. She has since filed lawsuits for wrongful termination, but all have failed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, see, I didn't know that part this morning when we were talking about that. Like, if two consenting adults don't have sex, it's... Right. Right, it doesn't... A student's a student. It doesn't matter. Right. But if you do it in the parking lot, right. okay. So uh, that, at the yeah, school, that. <laughs> during a parent event, you go like, uh, okay. It, right. it could have been her problem. own husband. She would get fired. The thing is, is that the story that I read, it made it sound like she lost her job because she had an affair with a student. Sure. That's why they said it not, I'm sorry. A student's parent. My bad. It was a student's parent, which, like you said, it's two consenting adults. Okay. okay. Maybe the kid's getting an A for no reason, but it's still two consenting adults. She got arrested for having sex in a public parking lot. That, that's the problem. I, I'm sorry, not arrested. She lost her job for having sex in a public parking lot. Out of hell with it. Lock her up, too. Lock her up. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. Most people go to jail. If you get busted, mm-hmm. right, having sex, I mean, I'm, you're not in there for years, but I mean, you get busted having sex in a parking lot, you get in trouble. All she did was lose her job. I'm like, I would take that deal. I sure. would rather lose my job than go to jail. I'd prefer not to do either, I but, would. you know. Yeah. Over in New York, one mugger found out what happens when you mess with a vet. The 84-year-old veteran was on his way to church after having gotten himself a cup of coffee when he noticed someone following him. As he went to take a sip from his coffee, the man attacked him and put him in a chokehold from behind. The quick-thinking man threw the hot cup of coffee on the would-be mugger and drug him to the ground. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, the attacker managed to escape after his face mask was removed by his victim, who went to the hospital and was treated for injuries. Jesus. 84, you're like, yeah, this is an easy mark. Next thing you know, he's beating your ass. Right. Here's some coffee. An 84-year-old man. What do you think he's got on him? Right, exactly. Nothing. A maybe a small of, money yeah, clip with five bucks. Right, maybe. All he's got is that coffee in his hand. Yeah. Who carries cash anymore? Well, I do. Mm-hmm. That's fair. It's getting harder and harder to spend it. I have discovered this. <laughs> yes. We won't give you change. 
Oh no. Uh, the drive-in theater craze continues. Walmart has teamed up with the parent company of the Tribeca Film Festival to bring people a series of free drive-in shows at their local Walmart. The showings will be digitally hosted by Drew Barrymore and will show movies spanning the past few decades. They'll also be showing short films before the movies for an added spark. They got a big parking lot. They got a big building. They can yeah, why not? Put it up hey. on the side and have fun, man. People don't really want to go into the building right you, you now. You could probably so. do a different movie on each side of the damn thing. That, you know? that is true. Those places are huge. But they said it, you know, as new as like Black Panther or or the Spider Man movies, all the way back to you know, I think Spy Kids was on there. They go back to like Wizard of Oz. I mean, they're they're showing a, a bunch of great movies up there. Yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah, a good especially idea. if you Space got kids, man. You bet for free. Why not? Mm-hmm. Uh, we go to Iowa for probably the most confusing bank heist I have ever seen. The man used a tool to break into the local bank, ran inside, grabbed himself a large bottle of hand sanitizer before bailing back out of the bank, and regardless of the lackluster haul, the man was tracked down and arrested. So he just went in there to steal hand sanitizer? Yes. It's what we drink. Huh. I mean, Interesting. it doesn't say anything like he tried to go for a register, you know, tried to break into the safe futilely. No, he just, he ran in, grabbed a giant-ass bottle of hand sanitizer, and booked it back out. My hands are filthy. <laughs> I feel like you would have an easier time and not get caught if you just went to some random store and stole that giant-ass thing of, of hand mm-hmm. sanitizer. I feel like it'd be easier if you stuffed cash in your pocket and no one notices. Right. Big-ass bottle of hand sanitizer. Oh, that's the guy. That's fair. I see where you're going there. In Florida, a household got an unwanted visitor. The occupants heard a noise coming from a different room that was revealed to be a naked man climbing into one of the windows. Damn. One of the hey, o- can I come in? One of the occupants initiated a fight with the intruder while the other alluded, alerted the rest of the house and fled to the neighbor's home. The homeowner fighting the intruder fled uh, fled the fight after he stabbed the intruder in the neck with a knife. Jesus. The intruder ran after the homeowner wielding a chair but couldn't catch him before he barricaded himself in the neighbor's house. The intruder fled but was later tracked down by police and arrested. Wait, there's a naked man barricaded in your home now with a knife in his neck. Correct. Yeah. All right, that is it for your headlines with that. Mike Arkansas. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. We'll see you uh, next time for 10 versus the FCC and the weekend will finally be here. Yes, indeed. It is all true. But in the meantime, well, we be all up out this bitch. So until next time, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man. A double flush production. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org.